Good day, brothers and sisters in Christ. Our scripture reading is a passage from our Lord's Sermon on the Mount. It has been misnamed as the Lord's Prayer. It must have been the disciples' prayer because our Lord Jesus, being sinless in his humanity, did not need to ask forgiveness of sins. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13 in King James Version. After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let us pray. Our awesome, faithful, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of life, giving us an opportunity to write another chapter of our life story here on earth and a time for meditation. May our prayer life will grow through this meditation. In the matchless and sweetest name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is on prayer, what it should be and what it should not be. What is prayer? A majority of people, especially Christians, claim they know how to pray on their own. This meditation will help us realize if we really know how to pray. Let's define prayer from a layman's point of view. Prayer is an unspoken or spoken address to God, a deity or a saint. Prayer is something that is wanted or hoped for very much. Just like faith, the most important thing about prayer is its object. That means the effectiveness of our prayer is knowing to whom you are praying and having an access to that person. For Christians, prayer is a conversation with God, our Heavenly Father. It's both listening and talking with Him. Why should we do it? because it is an important aspect of our Christian life. It is our declaration of dependence on Him. As God's children, it should be as natural as breathing. And how often are we doing it? Praying is something like breathing. Breathing is supposed to be natural, spontaneous, and continuous. The moment you stop breathing, you know you are good as dead. Where are you going to do it? We could do that anywhere. Daniel prayed in the upper room of his house with windows open towards Jerusalem. Jonah prayed in the belly of a great fish. Our Lord Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane and while hanging on the cross. What specific time are we going to do it? Any time. We could do it while cooking, driving, of course with open eyes. It's going to be dangerous if you drive with closed eyes. We do that while fishing. We could do that while walking, riding on a vehicle, while doing just anything. We do it before we plan, decide, choose, do a task or before any activity. And what is the proper posture of our praying? On our knees, with head bowed or lifted towards heaven, with hands lifted high, while sitting, while standing, while on bed, even lying face down. Any physical posture will do. It's the posture of our hearts that matters to our Heavenly Father. We could do it silently or in whatever form. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us by interpreting even our groanings. We could do it privately or publicly, and here eloquence is not necessary. It is the earnestness of our prayer that matters to our Heavenly Father. And we could do it with eyes closed or with eyes open. We close our eyes to avoid distraction by people and things around us and better focus on our Heavenly Father alone. It might prove difficult, however, to always close our eyes, especially when we are driving a vehicle, pulling weeds, cooking, swimming, walking or running, or doing any kind of task that requires our sense of sight. Prayer is taking part 
in a miracle. Imagine God hearing us pray at the same time without compromising individual attention to each of us. It's an open line to our Heavenly Father. James Banks said that prayer emphasizes God's ability to make things happen. Oliver G. Wilson said it makes the weak strong and the simple wise. It's a kind of communication that has no restrictions. God invites us to call on Him whether we are coming, going, or sitting still. Our Father is always on call. Psalm 121 verse 3 says, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. David Brannon said, Prayer is a link with those we cannot reach. By talking to the Lord about a friend or loved one's needs, we have a unique opportunity to make a difference in their lives, even though we can't be with them in person. No matter what the circumstances of our friends or family members who are away from us, prayer is always an effective way we can support them and be of help. When we are in desperate needs, prayer springs naturally from our lips and from our deepest level of our heart, according to David H. Roper. Prayer can help us defragment our lives. When we cast our cares on the Lord, He will show us what we need to do and what only He can do, according to Julie Ackerman Lane. The first step in our prayer is to acknowledge or to know that God is God, and in that attention, all else comes into focus. Prayer allows us to admit our failures, weaknesses, and limitations to the one who responds to human vulnerability with infinite mercy, according to Philip Yancey. The question is, when we pray, do we mean and mind each part of our prayer, whether it is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and our supplication? How often do we keep on insisting something that has been promised or even a reality to us. For example, we keep on inserting in our prayer the phrase, Be with us. Matthew 28 verse 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hebrews 13 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Psalm 139 verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? That means we never need to call him into our situation because he is with us all the time. Instead of asking God to be with us, why should we thank him for his abiding presence? If we ask the Lord to be with us, we doubt or don't believe the reality of his abiding presence. He is Lord, Yahweh, the faithful the loving covenant-keeping God. He is true to His word. He keeps His promises because He is almighty. El Shaddai, sufficient in all situations. Is there any promise that He did not keep or He doesn't keep? Our Lord promised His presence to His disciples before He ascended. That was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost when He sent the Holy Spirit. In essence, it's a fulfilled promise. That means our reality to us right now. God speaks to us through His Word, the Holy Spirit, and preachers and teachers. So instead of asking Him to speak to us, why should we take time to listen to Him? God's Word comes to us in many forms, and we know that from Bible-centered preaching, scripture reading, songs, study groups, devotional articles. The Holy Spirit comes alongside the Word of God to teach, empower, instruct, convict, and purify us. We sometimes ask our Father to dismiss us with His blessing. Again, we have His abiding presence. Why should we ask Him to send us away? I'd rather have Him than asking Him to dismiss me with His blessing. What is blessing without His presence? On the other hand, His presence is a blessing beyond compare. After all, He is the source of all good things and blessings of all kinds. Why not thank Him for the blessing and comfort of His round-the-clock presence? Is there a time in our life that we could say we don't need Him? Can we say to him, everything is already okay, Lord. I could take it from here. His reply might be, are you serious and sure about that? 
Sometimes we pray to inform God. We have to remember that there is nothing that He doesn't already know. He knows everything about us. He is all-knowing. He knows the past, the present, and the future. He knew us even before we were born, before the world began. Jeremiah 1, five says that. Psalm 139, verse 13 also says that. We worship God by doing it with our actions, attitudes, and conduct, not by declaring it in our prayer. Repetitious reference to the Lord almost in every sentence and sometimes at the beginning and end of each sentence. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's not necessary, especially when you do it in public. If we refer to the disciples' prayer of our Lord Jesus used Father once and add on every line, of the disciples' prayer. The same is true when we mention the phrase we pray too many times in our prayer. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong, but there is no need of that because God knows what you are doing. He knows that you are praying. We don't have to tell Him that we do. Our Lord Jesus said to start our prayer with our Father. Addressing God as our Father indicates intimacy and family relationship. Just as your children call you simply Father, anybody who addresses you as Father something, for sure you know is not your child. It's unusual if your children will address you that way. We should not ask God to do things we can do for ourselves. The purpose of prayer is not to conform God to our will, but to adjust our will to God. We must learn to trust God so that if He says no, we accept that His will is best. I quoted that from Henry and Richard Lockerbie. The purpose of prayer is not to get what we want, but to become what God wants, according to Julie Ackerman Link. Prayer is not meant to be contest with God, that we try to win. Sometimes we try to play mercy with God when we pray. We have a request that we desperately want answered in a certain way, so we try to bend his fingers back and get him to give in. Prayer is not the time to give orders, but to report for duty. That's according to Ancetus. Prayer is sometimes our last resort when nothing else helps and makes sense, instead of the primary resort. Let me share an article from our Daily Bread by David McCaslin. He said, Prayer does not give spiritual power. Prayer aligns your life with God so that He chooses to demonstrate His power through you. The purpose of prayer is not to convince God to change your circumstances, but to prepare you to be involved in God's activity. Prayer is designed to adjust you to God's will, not to adjust God to your will. If God has not responded to what you are praying, you may need to adjust your praying to align with God's agenda. Rather than focusing on what you would like to see happen, realize that God may be more concerned with what he wants to see happen in you. Prayer is not a means of coercing God to do what we want. It is a process of recognizing his power and plan for our lives. In prayer, we yield our lives and circumstances to the Lord and trust him to act in his time and in his way. But what does it mean to pray without ceasing? No, that's quite an order, isn't it? We wonder how this could be possible. Surely the Apostle Paul did not expect Christians to neglect their household duties or their occupations so they could spend all their waking hours in unceasing prayer. After all, he himself made tents for a living. The continual awareness of God's presence is not reserved for great prayer warriors like George Muller. All of us can have this moment-by-moment -moment fellowship. Whether we find ourselves surrounded by high-tech machinery or toiling over the kitchen sink or wrapped up in the routine of the office or buried under an avalanche of homework, God's ear is open to our cry. Our God-directed thoughts may not always be clawed in audible sentences, but we can pray without ceasing. As we do, the routine duties of life became empowered by His touch. When we live in the spirit of prayer, the lines of communication are always open. So how's our prayer life? Could we say now that we know how to pray? James 5.16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The conditions for our prayer to be effective are obeying God and doing what pleases Him. 
1 John 3, 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. No wonder why the disciple asked our Lord Jesus Christ to teach them how to pray, instead of asking him to teach them how to preach. Let us close with a prayer. Our awesome, faithful, and loving Heavenly Father, teach us to pray and to mind and to mean our prayer always with persistence, effectual fervency, and unceasing attitude throughout the day. We commit this in the matchless and sweetest name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, Amen. Thank you for joining our meditation. May our loving, faithful, and awesome Heavenly Father bless you.